Canterbury High School in Kent has formed a hard federation with Bohern Primary School. They have one governing body. Collectively, they are part of the Canterbury campus, which includes a nursery, a sports facility and an adult education centre. In 1993, we were named and shamed by the Daily Express as being one of the worst 20 schools in the country because we had 4% 5A to C. We then determined upon a course of action which was significant curriculum reform, a concentration, a relentless concentration on teaching and learning, workforce remodelling, which over a period of time has led to a curriculum which enables students to choose a route way and a pathway that they know is likely to give them the best chance of success. We are the highest performing non-selective school in the country. In terms of the, the ambition to be fully extended at the centre of our community, we are. We've gone from a school where students would very often leave feeling that they've not achieved as much as perhaps they would like, to a high performing school, to an outstanding school. The Federation is a hard federation of a primary school and a secondary modern Brilliant. high school. There is one governing body and one head teacher, myself. On the primary school site, there is a preschool and nursery, which we're just in the process of taking over the management leadership of. So in terms of educational provision, I'm directly responsible for 4 to 19. But there's also, as I say, the nursery, so it's 0 to 19. And if you include adult education behind me, it's 0 to 99. So the concept is lifelong learning, cradle to grave. Canterbury High formed a soft federation with Bohern Primary in 2004 and then in April 2005 they became an all-through hard federation. It's a relationship that's grown over the years um, and it started off with um, a feeling that we would be working together and we might benefit a lot from the high school. And what's happened in reality is that we've both benefited from each other. So we are we were able to give them um, some support with uh, the curriculum which um, has meant that they've taken on a thematic, creative, topic-based curriculum uh, based on what we did in the junior school. From our end, we benefit from resources. So we're able to run smaller classes, high levels of adult support. We're all able to run um, specialist services, so we have specialisms in modern foreign language, in music and in sport. These are things that primary schools just generally don't offer as a matter of course because the budget doesn't allow it. Also on the campus there is a four and a half million pound sports centre. We're a designated 2012 Olympic and Paralympic training facility and a performing arts centre. The management structure is distributed leadership. People ask me a question which is a stupid question. They ask me, when you're not there, who runs the school? And my answer is the same people who run it when I am. There are two deputies, myself and Nicky Mattin, uh, operate as deputies here, and we have a number of assistant heads looking after the various aspects of the campus itself. There is a head of learning for the secondary, there is a head of community projects and finance, and then there are a range of assistant head teachers all of whom have responsibility for aspects of learning across the school or across the campus. So in total the leadership team is 13. It's quite an unusual structure in that it's very flat in that the head actually allows people to do their own thing and to be responsible and to take risks and I think that's one of the things that marks the schools out. Over the years we've been enabled to take the sort of risky decisions that other people think how did you ever get there? It is unreasonable to expect that one person could possibly a manage and lead it or it would be an act of supreme arrogance to believe that anybody could therefore I don't try therefore my role is essentially a coordinating one which allows other people to get on and deliver things that are in the interest of the children and the wider community it's come about over a period of time as a result of exploiting opportunities rather than the fulfillment of a particular dream the primary school some time ago was in special measures and it was believed that by associating itself with a secondary that was perceived to be hugely successful, it would of itself assist the primary school to improve. Since then the sports centre was developed, performing arts was developed and adult, adult education then moved on to site. So in that sense it was driven both by an educational need and a community need. Nationally speaking, secondary schools have got away with murder 
in terms of small sixth form numbers, small class numbers and small key stage four numbers. The amount of it, the expense of that could be rationalised and the resources ploughed into early years and some, of, and some of the difficulties that secondary schools then face could be solved by early intervention in the primary and I think that's a model that should be explored nationally. It's a really important thing.